All right. It looks like we're at the hour. Um, thanks, everyone, for being here, and hope you can benefit from the information that we're going to be presenting. This uh, joint webinar between Guava and Cell Trust, we're going to be talking about the three must-haves for BYOD success. We're going to be talking about mobile security, compliance, as well as archiving. Those are the topics you're looking for. You're at the right webinar. Anyhow, my name is Q Mangus. I'm the Director of Product Marketing here at Guava, and we're joined by Brian Panico with Cell Trust, and also Joe Petrowski, also with uh, Cell Trust, and they'll be presenting the first part of the webinar, and then I'll jump in and then finish up with the archiving portion. A few items to just to take note of before we get into the presentation itself is if you do have questions, we're going to have some time at the end for a Q&A. So please feel free to put those questions through on the Q&A window or the chat window, and we will get to those at the end. So as we're going through, if you think of questions, go ahead and put them in there. Um, we'll get to those. Um, and also, this webinar is being recorded, so if you wanted to share this with others or come back and reference it, uh, we will have this posted, and you'll be able to view that at our YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash guava TV. And then everyone will also be getting an email with that link. So we will go ahead and uh, turn the time over to Brian and Joe, and they will uh, be presenting. Okay, uh, Brian and Joe, are you there? Yep, you got me here. This is Brian speaking. Perfect. Brian, go right ahead. You sound clear. <laughs> we appreciate the time on the call. Uh, hopefully this should be very informative in terms of describing some of the needs in terms of mobile communications um, and you know the needs to archive these communications within different vertical markets. I'm Brian Panico. I'm our Senior Vice President of Global Sales Strategy for the South Trust Corporation. Um, and what we do at Cell Trust is, is very much help in terms of your mobility strategies. I think that you know when you're looking into organizations that are compliance focused and, and have individuals and employees that fit into that high, highly regulated category, there's a lot of decisions that need to be made, not only in terms of archiving and compliance and surveillance, but really that have to do with how the mobile, the, your mobile strategy kind of comes into this, um, this overall archiving framework. So really there's a few ways that most organizations have gone about this, and, and, and typically it stands with either the selection of corporate liable devices that are very locked down, that are provided to these um, highly regulated users, or organizations have began to migrate to more of a bring-your-own-device type model, which enters in a whole nother level of security concerns, privacy concerns with employees. So we're going to talk about these things today throughout this presentation. Cell Trust Solution partnered with other enterprise mo mobility management platforms certainly provides a strong framework um, that ultimately provides that archiving and, and for compliance needs. So as we begin, you know, just to kind of touch on where things have been and where we're going with things today, I think there's been a pretty dramatic shift as you look between this device-centric mentality moving over to more of a user-centric uh, mentality. Whereas, you know, these, these classic devices that have typically been um, the driver for compliance and in mobility and you had this corporate device assigned to you, um, you know, this is kind of going away. And you see this empowerment of users to either bring their own devices and, you know, Apple is showing its face so much in the enterprise nowadays as well as Samsung with some of their neat tools and Knox. Um, so, and not to mention different form factors, everything from now wearables to, you know, you look at financial services, how high a concentration of corporate liable tablets and iPads there have been over these years. So there's a lot of things that have happened, and as this shift has occurred, you start to understand that this is so much more than just that simple IT decision and purchasing the right software because you have other groups from compliance to governance to surveillance to cybersecurity to all these different teams that need sign-off and buy-in before moving forward within this strategy. Um, so why do all these things? And I, I think it's pretty clear that mobility empowers your users to be more productive. And, you know, the stats are very, very solid with things in terms of sharing and people are using text out there. 
and, and ultimately respond to text a lot quicker than emails. But there's also a lot of concerns that need to be addressed in terms of the confidentiality and how this should be set up. Is it something as simple as a policy or is there technology that should be driving this? So that's kind of the, the issues that we're facing and the issues that CellTrust really spends a lot of time solving is providing this ability to not only, you know, you, know you, see, you see in terms of compliance, there's been kind of a drive to capture social networking and things like that. But SMS, being that lowest common denominator in terms of how people communicate with each other, is critical for firms to, uh, to archive and to supervise. So we solved that piece as well as different instances of voice recording that we're going to talk about today. So as we start thinking about how this is done, again, it's important to understand what folks have done out there in terms of their current strategies to see where we can kind of help and fix some of these. Um, and it has to do with this balance of risk and, and, and balance of control within organizations. Uh, you know, and, and what I think you see most of all is, as I mentioned, you have corporate liable devices that are out there that are super locked down, that that's one model that organizations have selected to go with. The, these corporate liable models, at times people have said, okay, well, I'm going to open up BYOD to users also. Mm -hmm. When you're opening up BYOD to users, you have to pay attention to so many things in terms of policies and technologies. And more often than not, what we see when we get out there in the field is unregulated BID, BYOD. So you have this non-compliant workforce out there that don't have tools on their device to capture SMS messaging or record voice. And maybe at minimum, they have some level of some secure email client on the device, but no type of containerization strategy for work applications and management of data. So what you see when you actually implement a mobile strategy that focuses on BYOD in a compliant fashion is you actually, you know, you end up putting solutions like containerized um, enterprise mobility management providers. Then you put Cell Trust on there that provides you with a separate and distinct mobile business number, uh, as well as audit capabilities for all of this information. The system that Cell Trust offers is fully integrated with other apps that are work apps, so their workflows work together in the background. So you really do get not only this sense of safeguard and compliance, but you have employees who ultimately are more productive out there in the field because of the way the apps are designed. Um, mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and talk about the CellTrust SecureLine app just a little bit here. The app is built for both Android and iOS platforms, and it's ultimately an app that can be downloaded very simply from the App Store. Um, in Conducting these downloads, you will end up working with your IT teams because there's a server that sits behind the firewalls of the organization or can be purchased as a hosting model that acts to control everything, right? So that's kind of the centerpiece of the solution where all the messaging is passed through. What you'll also note, and I mentioned this a few times, that CellTrust actually provides a separate mobile business number for our application. So your personal SIM card stays personal, and your you know IT has or in your work has no visibility into that box. Where your work text messaging and voice uh, is something that can be viewed and audited. As we continue, I'm going to walk through um, some of the key features, and then actually take you through kind of a a quick workflow of what some of these actual user, customer, broker type uh, conversations may look like. So what you're seeing here is the iOS version of SecureLine. It's, as you can see, it's designed to look and feel very similar to the native. Um, this was done intentionally, obviously. Um, we worked very closely with Apple as we started to determine the design, so that way it was something that complemented their uh, systems and how they design their apps. The solution, as we discussed, provides the ability to have full secure encrypted voice and full secure encrypted messaging conversations inside of your network. The encryptions have all been certified through NIST with FIPS 140-2 uh, 
uh, certificates that are available for Cell Trust to share um, as we get deeper into business conversations. We talked about the mobile business number. This would be used for talking outside of your internal contacts and outside of your company, um, which we're going to demonstrate in just a minute. Also, we're extremely flexible, so we can support different levels of BYOD, which we're very uh, uh, distinctly designed for, um, but as well as su supporting corporate liable strategies and corporate-owned strategies. So let's look into a quick workflow. And this scenario would be one which we have broker Bob on the left and customer Anna on the right. And so Broker Bob is a BYOD user, which means that that's his personal phone that he's using for work purposes. So in yesterday's world, what may happen in an unregulated BYOD is Broker Bob may uh, move forward by understanding, I need to send a text to Anna. So he would go to his regular text messaging. Now, if he did send from his regular text message, obviously Anna would get a message from Bob's SIM card number, and Bob's employer would not have any type of records of this communication. What CellTrust SecureLine does is when Bob selects that app, the CellTrust app, he can go into his contacts, select Anna, and select to send a text message to Anna from SecureLine. What happens is, is Bob would type out his message. The message is passed in an encrypted format into the CellTrust servers. The CellTrust servers connect to Guava's retain environment in real time, which this little uh, file drawers would represent Guava here. Ultimately, then the message would be passed back out to Anna's device, where you see it's being received on her standard SMS reader writer application, the native app on the device. So Anna requires no type of app or mobile app software as a customer. When Anna responds to the message in the same format, it's going to be passed through her carrier networks. Carriers will pass it to the CellTrust server. CellTrust would then pass the message back to Bob's device, where Bob would actually get the message inside of his CellTrust application. This whole communication, of course, is, again, passed through and retained through Guava for supervisor and e-discovery purposes. Now, the same type of workflow exists for voice calls. So if Bob was wanting to call Anna, he could use his CellTrust app to facilitate the phone call. The communication is all being passed through the server, where the server records in the form of MP4 uh, the voice conversation. And ultimately, this would connect to customer Anna's standard voice dialer. So it's a connection between CellTrust app and standard voice dialer. Again, all of this is conducted over the mobile business number that's owned by the organization. So to sum things up, I think some of the, some of the powerful strength that CellTrust has is allowing uh, businesses to support multiple strategies from your corporate liables for, that still exist in a lot of the very highly regulated individuals to allowing for you know, a first-of-kind, extremely compliant, extremely secure BYOD environment that includes voice and SMS for the first time. When looking at a BYOD strategy, there's certainly some things that, or a corporate liable strategy, I should say, there's certainly certain things that have to be paid attention to different than BYOD. Things like disabling iMessage, even turning off the standard SMS messaging with the carrier, functions that your EMM provider may or may not have to enable depending on the vertical would be things like disabling the camera and photos. Having the ability to remote wipe information off of here becomes critical for corporate liable. Um, from a bring your own device perspective, a fully compliant solution that separates out personal and keeps personal personal while keeping business communications um, professional and in, 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 in able to be captured in a compliant fashion from the organization. To sum things up, you know, mobile strategy is absolutely something that requires, you know, putting some significant thoughts into the systems, the vendors, the solutions that you put in place that not only make sense from a compliance and a surveillance perspective, but ultimately give the opportunity for your users to be more productive, 
and to use the tools that you're providing them. Um, as we go through these deployments, we spend significant amounts of time with the legal teams, with your compliance teams. CellTrust has privacy officers that we connect to the counterparts within your organizations. Um, you know, from an employee perspective, I think well, as you go through these user acceptance tests of the technology, it's important that we've designed the look and feels and the workflows to complement a productive employee. And finally, even from you know, customers, not having to have any type of downloading of uh, apps onto their device becomes important because you're communicating with, with them the way they want to be communicated with. Um, so I'm going to pause here on my section of the presentation. Um, and, and hand it back over to Guava. We also do have, and if time permits, or, or if the audience does wish to see, we have a live demo that we could do with some devices that we have on a camera as well. So, uh, you know, if there's additional questions and want to see some of the workflows live, we can provide that capability. Perfect. Thanks, Brian. And yeah, I think we should have some time at the end for that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take over the role here and share and share my my portion. So, um, yes, great information, Brian. Um, we love to see that information about how we can separate the personal from business communication. What I'm going to hit on a little bit here is the, that need for archiving. So Brian touched on that piece where um, CellTrust connects with Retain and, and it archives that. I'm going to touch a little bit about what Retain is and why you should be have why you should have that. So, the idea here, just to start out with a little bit, is the the need for archiving. Um, it's really important that, um, in addition to that secure and encrypted communication, and and you have that dual persona, you need to have oversight of those communications, um, those mobile communications. So that's where Retain comes in. Retain gives you the ability to archive those communications into one central archive that can then be searched. Um, you can perform, perform e-discovery and it, and it helps with compliance as well. And we'll touch on that for just a moment here. But really the idea is, is that by having that oversight, you can actually protect your employees. Um, you can go back and you can view what has been communicated. You can see what your employees have been saying. And you can prove whether or not an allegation is true. And that's important with an archive, and that's why it's important to implement a solution like Retain so that you can have that oversight. This also protects your organization from uh, allegations as well. So if there's different allegations of, of, say, sexual harassment, other discrimination, those kind of things, um, having an archive protects you from that. And also, by having an archiving, letting your employees know that that archive is in place, it actually helps them to act appropriately because <laughs> they know that there is that oversight. So that's important to have that oversight um, as your employees are either bringing your, their own devices or if they're issued a corporate device. And then just some of the regulations and that um, an archive will help you comply with and, and specifically retain, and that's depending on the type of organization you are. There are different regulations, but some of them are listed here on the screen. And, and the idea here and what the overriding theme of most of these regulations are is that you need to be able to archive mobile communication along with other types of electronic communication and easily access those communications. Um, so it's not enough to just have them as an archive and you know throw them into the corner, say like a filing cabinet. You need to be able to quickly and easily access them and have um, what we like to call nearline data. And that's really the difference between um, a lot of the archiving solutions that are out there and retain is that the these legacy solutions, as we like to call them, or archiving 1.0 solutions, are just about archiving. Um, they store the information, but it's difficult for you to go back and access that information. And it's important, it's imperative that you have quick and easy access, and that's where retain comes in. Um, furthermore, that's another idea behind the archiving is having technology to support your policies. So um, you need to make sure that you have policies that deal with electronic communication, with mobile communication, and um, obviously your policies will depend on how you're dealing with each situation. If it's BYOD um, and using the CellTrust app to have that dual persona, or if it's corporate and also using CellTrust, that policy needs to be in place. 
And then the technology, which is what we offer with Retain, then also with Celltrust will help enforce that policy and validate it. So I want to encourage everybody on this call that the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have policies that outline what can be communicated, what's appropriate, how mobile devices can and should be used, and then you need to make sure to have that technology that supports it. So now that we've kind of touched on a little bit of the background, I'm going to just touch on Retain as a whole, and then we'll hit on the mobile piece specifically. So Retain is that archiving solution for all types of electronic communication. So there's email archiving, there's social media archiving, and web search archiving, and then of course the mobile archiving piece, um, which I'll hit most hardly uh, today, since that's what, kind of what we're talking about. But just be aware that um, archiving is more than just the mobile piece. You need to be able to archive all of your electronic communication, and that's where Retain is different, is that it archives all of these communications into one central archive. It archives multiple email systems, that's Exchange, Office 365, GroupWise, Gmail. It archives social media and search. And what's great about Retain is that it's all archived into one central archive that can easily be searched. You can quickly and easily get to the data, and it's accessed in one central location. And I'll show that in just a moment. So for mobile in particular, um, of course, we work with Cell Trust to be able to archive those um, secure and encrypted communication. And let me show, let me actually show you that diagram. So this kind of builds on what Brian was talking about. Um, so you have, as, as Brian was talking about, the subscribers that, and everything goes through the Cell Trust app um, as it's subscriber to subscriber, and then also as it goes out to non-subscribers, it all goes through the Cell Trust app, whether that goes through Cell Trust and then to the carrier and out. But the idea here is that Retain pulls that information from the Cell Trust server and pulls it down using the, what we call the Retain Collector, and then brings it into the Retain server. And so when you deploy that Cell Trust Secure Line app on the phones, it looks seamless to your users. They're using that app. They're communicating with secure encrypted communication. That's being archived directly into Retain. And now you can go back and search that archive. And of course, uh, um, as was stated, the Cell Trust apps works for iOS and Android as well, and so we would archive those. Um, and then we also integrate with uh, with BlackBerry for those you, of you that may be using BlackBerry. There is a solution for that as well, but um, principally there's that integration with Cell Trust and the Cell Trust Secure Line app. Um, so here's an example of a search. So um, excuse me, let me. I actually skipped one slide. Here's an example of the search. Sorry, everyone. Here's an example of the search, and this is something I wanted to touch on. So in Retain, you do one search, and it brings back the results of all types of communication. So in this example, you have a search that was done, and some web searches were pulled in. So a web search on YouTube was pulled in. Some Twitter messages were pulled in, some Facebook messages. And then also, at the bottom there, you have some of those... Uh, Cell Trust messages as well with the Secure Line app. So what's great is that you have one central search that brings in all types of communication into one central archive. Also, your users have the ability to browse their own personal archives. So in this example, here's an example of the of a user um, using Secure Line and browsing across their archive and seeing the messages that have been archived and retained. Also, an administrator can have access to the entire archive and can browse individual archives, whether that's the mobile archive or email or social or web search. And then an administrator can do certain things. They can place litigation holds from here. They can tag these messages. They can forward them. They can export them. Um, and so there's great e-discovery and search tools for administrators and for auditors and other legal teams. One thing to be aware of as well is when you export, um, if, if you're doing this in the case of eDiscovery, it's needed to be, to be able to export to a PST or a PDF. Those are things that are required, generally speaking, by a legal team. However, 
we also have what we like to call the standalone archive viewer. So you can actually take a, do a search, export a subset of that archive based on your search, and that will be exported to that standalone archive viewer that's fully indexed and portable. So you can place it onto a DVD or a, or a jump drive or place it onto, a, say, like a Dropbox or Drive and hand that off to an external team. And since it's standalone, they can now um, install that on a Windows machine. They can go through that, that standalone archive viewer and search across the board. They can also perform redaction and strike out and then once again export if needs be to PDF. So now you don't need to be able to necessarily grant access to your entire archive to your to outside teams like legal or auditors. You can actually export it directly to a, a standalone that they can that they can search on their own. And then for the archive, this retain can be deployed on premise or in the cloud. Um, Either way, so depending on the needs of your organization, if you have to have something that is on-premise, depending on your regulations, you can do that, um, or there's also the Cloud Archive. So just to sum up we, what we've talked about, we're, we've been touching a lot on the need for archiving, for um, compliance, and for that security when it comes to mobile devices. Um, Cell Trust has got it covered when it comes to secure mobile communications. Um, they have that ability to separate that mobile and personal. And then with Retain, we integrate there to be able to archive that into one central archive and have a secure central archive that you can easily search and perform e-discovery. And it gives you that oversight of employee communication, and it gives you access to that data so you can quickly and easily access it both for information governance, to be able to know what's going on in your organization, what's being said, how it's being, how, you know, general, the general health of your organization, how people are communicating. There are tools in Retain to help you do that. And then also there are tools to be able to help you perform that e-discovery. If you're ever involved in litigation or a discovery request, you can quickly and easily get to that. So that completes the picture between having that secure communication and then having that oversight in the in the archive. I would encourage everyone to um, to try it out. Try out Cell Trust. See how that will work for you. And then also try out Retain and see how that oversight will help you have that complete picture. So we do have time for uh, Brian for you to be able to share um, some live demo time. I know we dedicated an hour, so uh, yeah, we'll have definitely have some time and some questions here. Um, we did have one quick question that I'm going to answer. This is specifically about Retain, and it is about the next version. Uh, apparently, it must be a, a customer of Retain. It's just asking when the next version of Retain will come out. Um, the next version is Retain 4, so those who are current customers, just be aware that that is the next version. Um, we are slating to have that done next month. So. Uh, Look for that sometime next month, so the month of October. Um, we should have a release out there for you. Um, there's some great new features in there, um, like an advanced search. If you want more information about that, please uh, visit our website at guava.com. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the time back over to Brian and Joe for a moment here, and they, I would like them to do a little bit of a, a live demo. Um, I know that some people have been asking for that. So uh, go ahead, Brian and, and Joe. In the example that I'm going to show here, you ha I'm going to show one app communicating with the other app. Uh, and so what we'll begin, we have our Android here on the left, and then we have our iOS device here on the right. So this particular instance, and let me close out all apps so I could start fresh. If, in this particular instance, you'll see that this is my personal, that's my personal cell phone number. Right, and then you have my work. So my work has my good work email. This is a integration with good technology. And then my Cell Trust Secure Line app. So let's go ahead and try to log into good work. In this case, I'm going to enter my password. And I'm able to get into my good environment. Now, using the good launcher, 
I can quickly jump to other apps that are within my secure container. In this case, let's jump to the Cell Trust app. You'll notice that it automatically authenticates in. So it, it, so it bridges, uh, you, you don't have to have a separate password because you utilize single sign-on through Good Technologies Container. Now, let's go ahead and send a message, in this case, to Brian's Android device that's over here. And I'm gonna say, hello. Now, one of the neat features that you could also send with these messages is, for example, if I click the settings and I select to send this message as a pager notification. When this happens, the message will actually be sent with more of a, like a VIP notification type functionality where it'll be a louder beep and it'll continue to beep until the other phone addresses the message. So, um, as we click send, you'll notice that the icon on the iOS device is in pink, and now you have this loud beep going on on the Android device in a, in a banner that's indicating that I have a new secure message. Uh, that beep indicates the pager, uh, and you see that on this device, it's now, it's now told me that the message, that plus sign, indicates that it's been delivered to the device, but not read yet. So let's go in here. And look at this particular message. So you see that I've got a badge on my secure line indicating that I have a new message here. So I'm going to go ahead and access the badge and go into, oops, go into my messages and take a look at the new message, which is coming from Brian's iPhone. As I select this new message, you see I received the hello on this side. Now, now that I've actually opened the message, you'll also notice that the check mark on this box has now been updated to show that uh, the message has been read by the other user. Um, if you click and hold, you can actually get statuses on the delivery. So you see this particular message was delivered at a particular time, opened at a particular time, um, and the same way that it goes for this side of the device, where you can see the stats of when it was received by the device and when it was open. Um, you know, some of the other neat things I think to mention as we go to are even things like the use of emoticons or emojis that you'll, that you'll hear and refer to. Um, you know, when you're sending these type of things, similar to, um, you know, similar to any type of archive communication, you have to be able to capture these as they're sent. So the cell trust solution not only allows for you to, um, you know, send text and things like that, but it allows for the sending of emojis or emoticons, and the server captures them in that form. Often you see when brokers and customers are having communications that now they're using more of these symbols as, as part of their communication, so it's important to track these type of things as well. Um, you know, one more thing I guess to hit on here would be um, would be things like good integration on the Android app. You see this little launcher. This is called the good launcher. So if I want to go back into my good email, I can simply click the launcher that lives inside the app to be directed back towards things that are available within good secure container environment. Um, you know, one last thing I will try to show would be what's called a contact integration. So as I go into, like, good, and let's say I'm going into my good contact book, and let's say I want to send a text message to Dragon, who's one of our sales engineers here. You see that the, the contact book is inside good's framework. This isn't a cell trust contact book. But when I select to send a text message to Dragon, it'll automatically bring up the Cell Trust app to send the message. So business always stays business, and it doesn't allow you to go to the personal side of things. Um, you know, the final piece to, I guess, note here, too, is it's a full voice solution as well. So, you know, in, in respect to, you know, calling outside phone numbers and things like that, you can, you know, dial just like a regular dial pad and connect. And as you have these phone calls or have these communications, actually, let me, I'll actually connect to Brian's Android device. Um, but as you have these communications, remember, 
they're fully encrypted communications that are going through the server um, when they are made from app to app, right? And uh, other pieces to kind of note, the, the recordings are captured as MP4 files, as we talked about earlier. Um, and these can be pushed to the archive players as well. I'm going to show you how the incoming message looks. Um, but as you see, very simple to use. We try to make the interfaces extremely similar to your standard interfaces. Um, and that's kind of the overall nuts and bolts of the solution. Great information. Um... And it looks like we do have a few questions that have come through specifically for Celtrust. So I think that um, we should have some time for that right now. So uh, thanks again, Brian, for that information. Let's see. Let me just get through a few of these here. Um, okay, first we have, uh, does Celtrust require the mobile device to change its phone number, or does it use a virtual phone number specific for Celtrust? So... The Celtrust solution provides a secondary business number that Celtrust acts as what the terminology you would hear would be a LEC provider, so similar to a carrier. We buy our blocks of phone numbers, and they are real numbers, so the term virtual, um, you know, they're the same type of phone numbers that carriers have. Um, we assign those to the particular mobile devices, and you can assign them um, as an administrator wherever you want to put them. And again, they work. They are real phone numbers, so the ability to port numbers in or port numbers out is available. So often we find the use case uh, as a scenario where um, you know customers had corporate liable BlackBerry devices, but now they may have moved their strategy away from BlackBerry and opened up BYOD, but they want to keep that BlackBerry number as the business phone number. So we can easily port that phone number in. Um, so that um, the, the, the user could obviously still maintain that phone number. And the same way porting out works. Great. All right, let's see. <clears throat> um, do you have the ability to restrict an iOS user from using the native iMessage application and force them to use your client? <laughs> yeah, so on corporate live, so on BYOD devices, you don't want to restrict that because that's their personal side that they're doing personal, right? So there's, there's more of a separation where, um, you know, policy states that you're supposed to use the Cell Trust app. You're not allowed to copy and paste things out of the containerized secure environment um, into the unsecure environment. But when it's a corporate liable model and it's an iOS device, there's different steps that have to be taken. Um, iMessage through, you know, a number of the enterprise mobility management providers uh, have the... Uh, the DEP service where you can actually um, disable iMessage and you don't actually have to uh, you don't actually have to physically touch all of the devices anymore if you're working with the right EMM with the with the solution so you would actually lock down iMessage using Apple tools and configurator tools great okay and then this one's more about the retain side is our deleted messages archived um, yeah, so even if a, a message is deleted, since it's, it's integrating with the Celtrust Secure Line server, they go through that server so it's archived at that level. So they, if a user does delete a message, it's still archived in Retain. Oh, yes. And then uh, the other one here is how does the app, how does it work if the app is not open? Um, how does it work if the app is not open? So. The app doesn't have to remain open on the device. So you can be logged out of the app. The app could be closed out. So you have a password, um, you know, that is going to end up having some sort of timeout based on, um, based on administrative controls. You know, you could have it log out every 30 seconds if you want with non-activity. When a message comes in, as you saw on the live demo, there's a message badge and a banner. So there's a notification banner that tells you you have a new message inside that app. And then also there's a badge, just like your text messaging app or phone calling, that shows that you have a message inside of that app. Uh, if you haven't logged in in a certain period of time, it'll have you input your uh, password before logging in to access that information. Perfect. All right, that looks like all the questions we have. Oh, let's see. Sorry. There is one other one. It says, um, 
Is your archive, so this is one to retain it specific, is your archive for CellTrust SEC compliant, i.e. write once, read many? Um, absolutely, yes. Um, we've, we uh, have that ability, that worm storage, uh, both on the cloud or on-premise. Um, so yes, that is something that you can, uh, it is compliant with SEC regulations. Great question. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And, I'll, and I'll compliment to that. CellTrust spends a ton, a ton of time in terms of privacy, and I'm actually, sh I, was, I was showing kind of an additional screen with how some of the journaling gets fed in, so it shows the progression of the messages. Um, but what I'll say is, um, you know, there's a lot of different requirements and from a compliance standpoint that you're going to start to run into. In the United States in particular, there's a lot of time that we're spending with FINRA as well as the SEC to help kind of define different technologies and procedures and policies. The other piece to note is the TCPA regulations that right now there's a lot of opinions that are uh, preceding the upcoming rulings, but there's different things in terms of notifications for this electronic communication capture. So many organizations are actually using CellTrust to now tag a disclosure on the outgoing messages from broker to customer to have a, li uh, a link to different monitoring disclaimers, almost the same as you see in email and financial services where you have those 2,000 characters that appear on those outgoing messages from financial service employees. So all of these type of considerations become very important on the compliance side in terms of get, having a system that could support you in terms of uh, the appropriate disclosures. Perfect. Great. Thanks, Brian. And let's see. Yep, that looks like all the questions we have for now. Um, thanks, everyone, for your participation and for your questions. And thanks uh, to Brian and CellTrust for being on this webinar. And once again, this webinar has been recorded, so uh, look for that link. And uh, thanks, everyone, for being here. Thank you.